Welcome to the Voice of Salvation programming, whose main source is to be an inspiration to you through the message of hope and peace. And this is only achieved when you remain in tune. Stay with us and you will be blessed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The basic attitude or willingness of a person determines his destiny both in this life and the life to come. The control of one's attitude is more than the mere will that a man can cope with. A carnal person cannot possibly be spiritually minded. His nature prohibits it. There may be times when he has an elevation of his thoughts and feels more in harmony with spiritual things than at other times, but it is impossible for him to be spiritually minded as a way of life. On the other hand, the person who walks after the Spirit will not live at ease with carnality. His spiritual nature is offended by carnal things. However, the spiritually oriented person must guard against the carnal always. He is never so spiritually minded that he is safe from the carnal influences. Carnal mindedness caters to the lower nature, giving satisfaction to the lust and desires of the flesh. This leads to death. Spiritual mindedness gives supremacy to the spirit and delights in the excellency of spiritual things. This means life at its fullness and peace which passes understanding. I
Christian mental health. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Isaiah tells us to forsake his way, his thoughts. Much mental sickness in the world today is undoubtedly one of the results of turning from the ways of God to the ways of sin. Certainly the worry, stress, and strain that leads to the purchase of so many pills and drugs can be traced to the lack of good mental health. Someone has said that guilt feelings, connected with unconfessed sin, were responsible for so many patients now residing in mental health places. And even though a Christian may be subject to nervous breakdowns and physical afflictions, as common failing of the flesh, he is in a better spiritual condition to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Having companionship with God, the saint can count upon his abiding presence in the time of trouble. As we began this message today, we read in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah gives us a great invitation to many and to many sinners. And while he wrote to the Jews in Babylonian captivity, his message and the truth he promoted is applicable to any age. Notice that he challenges sinners to seek God while he may be found, implying that a day will come when seekers will not be able to find him. And this will be true when the spirit quits striving and when death comes, and when the judgment arrives. Then Isaiah says to call while he is near, and though he will not always be so close. Next, the sinner is told how to find God and how to be heard of him. He must first forsake sinful ways and the unrighteousness of thoughts, then return to the one who has mercy and abundant pardon in store for the sincere seeker. Two kinds of sinners are implied in this passage, one whose wickedness is very great and one who is guilty of secret sins that are more mental than physical. Also, the wicked may be one who never knew the Lord, while the unrighteous may have at one time been righteous. However, this may be, we know that the invitation is a general whosoever will nature and invites all who have gone away from God following the example of Adam, to return and receive mercy instead of justice, pardon rather than punishment. Now let us go to the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. The Apostle Paul writes, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Paul tells us here that every thought must come to the obedience of Christ. The Apostle Paul deals with the manner of men's thoughts, and as Isaiah called for the forsaking of unrighteousness and unrighteous thoughts, the Apostle encourages the conquering of vain imagination, which comes from the mind and is caused by the devil, plus the capture and control of any thought that would be in opposition to the will of Christ. Both writers indicate that much of this forsaking of thought, casting down of imagination, is something the individual can do for himself. At any rate, we know that he must be willing to do his part of the job, turning to the Lord for the portion of forsaking and casting down which seems to be impossible for him. D. L. Moody was asked about evil thoughts, and he compared this to having a bird fly overhead, saying, You can't stop the bird from flying, but you can keep him from building a nest in your hair. Evil thoughts in vain imagination may come to the mind as uninvited guests, but no one should take them in as permanent residents. Isaiah followed his invitation for the unrighteous man to forsake his thoughts with God's declaration. My thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
And here is ample reason for man to bring all of his own thoughts into subjection to the mind of Christ. As we continue to read the New Testament, we go to the book of Titus, chapter 1, and we'll read verse 15 and 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. If you didn't know, our character affects our outlook. Now, Titus speaks about the defiled mind and conscience. The Bible says in verse 15, unto them that are defiled, it's nothing pure. Paul has been writing to Titus concerning the qualifications of a bishop, showing the great need for godly leaders among the church. Not only was there great sin in the land, the saints were being troubled by those who would hold to the Mosaic law concerning meats and drinks. So the Apostle Paul writes that to the pure all things are pure, while those with defiled minds and conscience will make all things impure, seeing evil where none exist. We are reminded of the woman who thought a neighbor's wash was dirty, but came to find out that she had been looking through a dirty window. In a similar way, Those who think with a dirty, sin-controlled mind can believe nothing good about anything and are continually searching for faults in the lives of those who are the most godly. Verse 16 speaks to us on the subject of resultant hypocrisy. It says, in works they deny him. It is sad to see a self-appointed critic of the saints. Quite often he claims self-righteousness to be living entirely above reproach, yet from the condemning attitude he exhibits towards others, it is evident that he is led by the wrong spirit. He may have a form of godliness, but underneath there is an awareness of secret sins and a fear of being discovered. Eventually he is able to excuse himself for doing many things contrary to the laws of God, having a conscience so seared and defiled that it is insensible to any correction of the Spirit. This is the final outcome for those who fail to guard their hearts and minds against evil thoughts and vain imagination suggested by the devil himself. But what is the basis of pure thoughts? Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. In writing to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul was well aware of the fact that much falsehood was in the world, and that many would be endangered by those who would try to lead them into heresy. Thus the Apostle calls upon saints to let their thoughts dwell upon things that are true, things proven to be accurate and according to God's word. Someone has said that by telling the truth at all times, a person never has to worry about repeating what he has said on an earlier occasion. This is why it tells us in Philippians whatsoever things are honest. For the dishonest person, it is very difficult to believe that anyone else is honest, Knowing himself and his own inclination to falsehood and deception, he cannot imagine how it would be for a person to always maintain honesty in his conversation and dealings with others. Yet it cannot be denied that there are those who are 100% honest in the things they do and say. And this is why Paul wants the saints to magnify, think on the things and repeat the things that are honest rather than dwelling upon manners that are obviously full of deceit and hypocrisy. Then he says, whatsoever things are just. It is true that much injustice exists in the world today. It is also true that many courts of law are corrupt, and that might and money makes right, in a lot of instances. Yet all is not unjust, all is not crooked. 
There remains an element of society that is sincerely interested in good government and justice for all men. And this is the kind of positive thinking Paul wants the saints of God to do. Then Paul says, whatsoever things are pure. Earlier in our message, we talked about where nothing is pure to those defiled and governed by evil conscience. Yet, the iniquity of one individual does not automatically destroy the purity of another. And while impurity outweighs purity in this world, it cannot utterly destroy the purity of heart and mind made possible by the indwelling of God's Spirit. Nor can it completely erase from the earth those clean, holy deeds done by servants of the Lord. Paul continues to say in Philippians, whatsoever things are lovely. Some people are accused of looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, seeing nothing but beauty and goodness on every hand. Yet such people are refreshing in comparison to those who see nothing but ugliness and evil. It is true that both good and evil, beauty and ugliness exist, but to continually point out either condition is to magnify and emphasize its presence. Thus, it well befits the Christian to think and talk of those things which are lovely and of good report and of a good virtue. The devil's servants will point out the other side of the picture. And then Paul says, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. The Apostle Paul gives us and he talks about good reports and that such reports would bless all who heard it. Now, he wanted believers to spend their time thinking on good rather than bad information. Then he advised the saints to think of the manners that were virtuous and worthy of praise, knowing that so much positive thinking and so much magnifying of truth, honesty, justice, purity, and loveliness in the world could do nothing but good to the thinker. My friends, books have been written about some of the great battles of world history. In many instances in the past, entire histories of various countries have been changed by one great and decisive battle. It is interesting, but futile to think of what might have happened if the other side had won the victory. Nevertheless, these battles of history were real and left a record to be read by posterity. However, some of the greatest battles are not a contest of military strength. They are fought in the minds of men, women, boys, and girls. These battles do culminate in a victory one way or another. A mind filled with hate, envy, strife, jealousy, doubts, and fears will lead to victory for the devil. A mind filled with love, honesty, and purity of thought will lead to victory over the evil forces of the devil. You may not be able to stop evil thoughts coming occasionally to the mind, but you can refrain from entertaining them. Evil thoughts take their flight when one turns to God with a heart full of faith and love.